Hey folks, welcome to my Origins Game Fair 2023 recap. So, basically what I'm going to do here is just going to give a brief description of what I was doing there at the con, and I'm also going to be giving you a display of the games that I brought back from Origins in two different categories, because basically I, I was able to and it's a blessing you know i was able to procure a, a few review copies uh, but as i said in my previous list my uh, top 10 games to purchase i did purchase a good number of games while i was there as well for use on the channel but first i wanted to start with the whole reason behind me going and and of course i was going to be there to try to uh, spread the word about my new channel and all of that kind of stuff but the main reason i was there I went with a group of guys called Love Thy Nerd. Now, Love Thy Nerd is a, a group of Christians that basically just uh, offer their services to uh, people that are running booths, to publishers and so forth, that need help running their booths. Uh, we, our whole purpose for doing that is to help people run their booths and to do the best job that we possibly can at doing that. Uh, we're not going to be there to uh, proselytize or or anything like that, be awkward or anything. We're simply there to uh, love people and to love the publishers by simply doing the best job that we possibly can do for them. And that's the testimony that we want to leave is that uh, we, we love the people that we're working for and we love the people that are coming to visit the people that we're working for. Uh, so that's what we were there for. It's called uh, a group called Love Thy Nerd. And, and uh, most of our guys were at the Game Found booth uh, helping uh, Alex and the uh, uh, GameFound folks uh, demo as best as possible all the games that they had available to demo in their booth. Uh, we also were with a smaller publisher called Envy Born Games. Uh, we had a couple guys working that booth over there, and I was working at the Game Toppers booth uh, with Kevin Burkhardsmeyer, or better known as Berkey, or the Sheriff of Nottingham. Uh, way back in the day from his uh, board game theater days with the Dice Tower. I've known Kevin for a very long time and uh, it was a great uh, thing to be able to get back and uh, see him and not only see him but help him uh, do well in the very prosperous business that he has. So I was working in the Game Toppers booth in Hall C and then the other guys were in the exhibit, uh, Exhibitors Hall uh, working at GameFound and Envy Born Games and we also did some other uh, things helping out here and there with people that looked like they needed help. We stopped and offered uh, to help out and, and of course some of those people accepted. So that's why I was there. I don't like necessarily going to conventions just to go to conventions because frankly I'm not a huge big group of people kind of guy. Now I've gone to concerts back in the day, Metallica, um, Man, who else have I gone to? Bon Jovi, Skid Row, Motley Crue, Van Halen. Even in my younger days, back in the early, you know, whatever, I really wasn't even a guy that was going to get down in the pit or even on the floor and get next to and inst and amongst all of that humanity. I just wasn't that person. I tried it a couple of times. Super did not enjoy it. I've just never been... Uh, a, a big groups kind of guy. So I don't really enjoy going to conventions just to go to a convention. I find that when I've done that, uh, I've been, uh, I find myself bored after just, you know, maybe a day. Uh, so going for five days, I need a purpose. Love Thy Nerd was my purpose for going. Uh, helping out Berkey and his uh, Game Toppers booth, booth was my purpose for going. But while I was there, I did get to make some some, I think, and I certainly hope, some great connections with publishers that will help the uh, channel flourish. And so I'm, I'm excited for what the future has to hold. So what I'd like to cover next is what we picked up, what I picked up for the channel that I told you I was going to pick up. All right, so I did a top 10 games I was going to purchase. And I have to tell you, I got nine out of the 10. So... There we go. So my number 10 was Jalapagos Big Box. And bleep. <laughs> that's the one I missed. But the, it's the one on my list that I was like, eh, 
If I don't get it, I don't get it. So I didn't pick up Helopagos because they ran out. Not my fault. Next one on my list was number nine, Castlescape from Praetorian Board Games. Praetorian Board Games, Castlescape. This is an actually a pretty dense box that we're that we're looking at here. There are a lot of uh, castle wall tiles and, and cards and a board. And I was also able to demo this before I actually purchased it. So when I showed up, their booth was, a, it had some people in it, but it wasn't super busy. So I was able to sit down and uh, have the guy demo it to me. And, I, and then two other people sat down. So we kind of did a few rounds of a three-player game. And it was actually a really interesting experience. Uh, basically, the way I'm looking at it is this is kind of like a Ragnaroks with deck building. Uh, the next one on my list was Resurgence. And of course, I didn't think ahead. I should have, but I didn't think ahead. And Resurgence is on the absolute bottom of this pile. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So here is Resurgence. And Resurgence is a uh, very Orléans-esque. If I can, if I can make that, uh, that's what I heard at least. I was not able to play this yet. Uh, I just picked it up, still in the shrink, wasn't able to uh, demo it or anything like that. But I was able to talk to the designer of Resurgence, uh, Stan Stanislav Kordonsky, and uh, he actually. Uh, has done a couple of other games that I've really enjoyed. Um, I was able to play his new title that's coming out called Nova Roma. We'll talk about that later. But he also did Rurik, Dawn of Kiev, and some of you may have heard of, of Endless Winter. Those are a couple of games that come uh, that this game comes from, the same mind. Uh, he's also a registered nurse. That was cool. I found that out to, about him this time, and I, I just think that's a great a cool thing that um, he's a registered nurse. And, oh, by the way, he does also, he designs great games. Uh, the next one is Blazon. And Blazon, first of all, I love the look of this box. Um, I like the little shininess that's on it. Uh, so basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to build your own coat of arms, your own family crest, or um, bah, 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 give rise to the occupation of herald. These heralds have the responsibility of learning and maintaining the rules and protocols governing the design and creation or blazoning of arms. So these were the crests that people were putting on their... Uh, oh, wow, these are super heavy. But this is a little pack that came along with it. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to giving Blazon a try. It looks like it's going to be really fun. And uh, was able to also spend some time with the uh, guys. Not a whole lot of time. We were kind of in the same spaces a lot. And so there was a little bit of interaction that way. But uh, Chad and the guys at 25th Century are all great guys. And, and uh, I'm looking forward to playing this. Three, uh, two to four players, 30 to 60 minutes, ages 14 and up. Next one. Uh, is a game called Resist, and there it is. And now I'm about to eat some crow on this because uh, I did not realize <laughs> I did not realize that this was a solo game when I said I was really interested in picking it up. I looked at all the game mechanisms that it uses. I did not look at how many players it is. And if you know me, you know that I'm not a huge solo gamer. But because I said I was going to pick it up and because um, I don't want to let anybody out there down, I'm going to bite the bullet. I'm going to still play it. I'm still going to look into it. Still going to give it a review. And I'll let you know how it goes. So that is Resist from 20th Century Games. Motor City was next on my list. And that one is right under here. So Motor City... Uh, JT actually said he was interested in this. I told him, it's a roll and ride, brother. And he was like, never mind. JT doesn't like roll and ride games. But I do. I like roll and ride games. And uh, this looks like it's going to be interesting. Uh, so you're going to be rolling and riding and designing your own car and all that kind of stuff. And I'm looking forward to it. Matt Riddle, Adam Hill, Ben Pinchback. These are all good designers good designers names these uh, i've i've played games that i've really enjoyed from them in the past so 
Uh, I'm looking forward to giving Motor City a try. The next one that we're going to be talking about is... Kapow! See, I'm not just being obnoxious and loud. That is actually the name of this game. It's called Kapow, Volumes uh, 1 and 2. So basically, I believe what happens here is that you're. this is a, um, a, a dice crafting game. A dice crafting game means that you're going to have these uh, uh, dice that kind of, let me see if you can see it right there, see right here, where it, it's, it's like a cube that all of these faces can kind of snap into. Uh, and you construct your dice based on the powers of your superhero, whatever they might be. And I think you're just going up against them. So uh, now I wasn't able to uh, demo this. They, they were demoing it at Origins, but I just didn't get around to that getting back to the booth after I purchased these. Next on the list was Old Tree. Undead and Alive. Now, this box is a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be, but I'm not really worried about that. It's basically a bunch of cards. Uh, it says, uh, in the satrapy, death has never been as final as one would like. Walking corpses, ravenous scavengers, minions of small dark gods, get ready for chilling encounters. So, I'm looking forward to this. And again, it's got Vincent Dutre's artwork, so bonus i'm looking forward to giving this one a whirl putting it i'm i'm looking forward to giving the base game a whirl as well i haven't been, got it to the table but uh the style of game that it is the vincent Dutrait's artwork all kind of uh enraptured me back at gen con last year so this is something that i'm wanting to get to the table as well so old tree and its expansion, Undead and Alive. Now the next one I picked up, number two, was Brains and Brawn. And here you go. Oh, there's actually some a little bit of a some bonus cards here for this thing. But Brains and Brawn, this was flying off the shelf. They had to actually restock it while I was there, which before I realized that they were restocking it was causing me a bit of stress because I thought... I was going to get the last copy or I wasn't going to get a copy because there was only one copy left on the shelf when I showed up. So I snagged it. And then they said, we're restocking. And I was like, Whew. Really cool sculpts for uh, uh, for Spider-Man and She-Hulk. You can see those right there. Um, I think uh, uh, Doctor Strange's sculpt is also cool. But Unmatched is a game that we're going to be reviewing here in a little bit. And uh, you may or may not be able to glean how I'm going to review that. By While I was there, they had a thing going on that was like, buy two, get one free. And so, yeah, I bought Hell's Kitchen. And uh, Brains and Brawn at the same time. And and so for my free one, they were saying, hey, you can pick up a, um, a Legends, uh, Battle of Legends Volume 2 uh, to go along with it. And and so I, I got all this for at one point. And then I was like, you know, I'm, I'm a real fan of Ghost Rider and Moon Knight. Well, not so much a fan of Moon Knight. I, mean, I watched the Disney Plus series, so that's about it. Uh, but Ghost Rider, Ghost Rider now, he's he's been around for a while. Luke Cage is pretty cool as well, but I've really been a fan of Ghost Rider for quite some time, so I couldn't leave this guy just sitting on the shelf by his lonesome. And then the last one on my list was the Atlantis Rising Monstrosities expansion. Really, really looking forward to giving this one a try. Uh, it also came... Uh, well, it didn't come with it. I also purchased the, uh, the um, you know, prom promotional items, uh, little, um, you know, wooden things that come along with it for monstrosities. So I was able to get this one as well. Really looking forward to that too. So there you have it. And then a couple other games that I purchased that I wasn't, that weren't on my list. Um, Envy Born Games, one of the booths that um, we were able to uh, help out. Uh, had a little game called Mind Your Business, and I had one of our guys, one of our LTN guys, show it to me, um, and it's, it looks really fun. It looks really fun. It looks interesting. It looks um, challenging, and so I went ahead and picked up a copy of it, and this came with um, 
uh, a whole bunch of uh, sleeves as well for the cards because you're going to be manipulating the cards as well. So, yay, I get to sleeve some cards. And then I also picked up Green Team Wins. Green Team Wins is also from uh, uh, 25th Century Goliath and Goliath Games. This is a party game for three to six players, ages 10 and up. It only takes 15 minutes to play. About. That's a little bit of a... Because usually what happens, if you were just like boom, 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 yeah, I could see you playing 15 minutes. But usually a lot of conversation, lots of laughter, uh, a lot of um, what, how, how can you answer that? You know, that kind of stuff goes on. So 15 minutes gets stretched out, but maybe 30 minutes, I would say. 30 minutes is probably about right. But this was really fun. Played this a couple of times over the week. Um, played it um, in Discord <laughs> with the LTN guys in one of our group. Uh, meetings before the show. Uh, so this is fun. Looking forward to giving this one a review as well. Now for the, the games that I wanted to demo. Uh, I was less successful than I wanted to be about that. I actually only got to demo uh, exactly one of the five that I wanted to get there and do. I was not able to get by to uh, uh, Skytear Games. Skytear Games to have uh, to have the demo for Sky Tier Horde, uh, I was able to get to the uh, 3WS Games booth and demo Charcuterie the board game. That was a very fun game, um, a very fun experience, and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what happens there. Uh, they're they're going to be hopefully I'm going to be on the list. I believe I'm going to be on the list of uh, uh, content creators that are going to get one of the uh, promotional. Uh, prototypes so uh, along the circuit of cr content creators so when that shows up I'll be sharing that with you uh, so that you can see that I'll probably have my wife do it with me because she's gonna she's the she's the main reason why I, I wouldn't looked at it to begin with uh, I was not able to uh, get a uh, a demo of stalker the board game done there were there were only a few that knew how to play stalker so if you weren't at the, there at the right time you weren't able to demo it I didn't have the time to sit down and read the rules with it and all that kind of stuff. So part of that is on me because I didn't take the time to actually sit down and try to learn it. Uh, Unmatched Adventures Tales to Amaze was not being demoed. Uh, so that was a little bit of misinformation. They wanted to do it, uh, but they just didn't get the copies in in time in order for, for them to be able to demo it at the show. Lords of Ragnarok, I was able to sit down with the rulebook for a little bit and uh, at least experience what the game is like. But unfortunately, the copy of the game that they had there was incomplete. So there were some crucial elements of the game missing and we weren't able to actually play through it. <laughs> And then there were several games that I, I was able to get uh, review copies for, which I sincerely appreciate because when a booth gives you a review copy, they are losing out on some money um, for that game. And, and so they're, they're missing out on some, some of their uh, margin and they're missing out on some of their, uh, you know, making ends meet. So I do appreciate every single publisher that was uh, willing to give me a review copy for the, for the channel. And uh, I sincerely hope that I'll be able to do them right by, by reviewing their game. And of course, I'll give each and every one of, of those games a fair shake. Um, but the first one is a trivia game. And before you say anything, I know most people are like, ugh, trivia games. But this one's actually pretty cool. And this was one of the ones I was actually going to pick it up. I was going to purchase it if they didn't give me a review copy for it. But this one's called HexaQuest. Uh, HexaQuest is a is called the Strategic Trivia Game. It's from a group called Tumbling Heads. Uh, I talked to Martin, the uh, owner there, and um, he explained the game to me. And so basically, the game is played where you have a whole bunch of these little hexes. And on one side of the hex, it has a number from, I believe, 1 to 5. And on the other side, it has a color and then a little uh, caricature, caricature drawing of a certain uh, category of questions. So uh, the, the hex board is set up in such a way to where you have some of them that are showing the number, some of them are showing the uh, color or the categories. So on your turn, you can choose one of those hexes. And so you'll either choose the difficulty, not knowing what the category is, or you'll choose the, you'll, you'll choose the category, not knowing what the 
uh, difficulty is. And if you answer the question correctly, you'll be able to keep that hex. And once the uh, hexes are all gone, you add up the number of points that you have on your hex tiles that you got from answering the correct questions. And whoever has the most points is the winner. So it has a neat, interesting twist to a trivia game, and I think it's going to be pretty fun. Uh, it, it definitely sounds fun, and they have a whole bunch of expansions uh, boxes with more cards and all that kind of stuff for different categories that can be added into the game. So looking forward to giving that a try, especially in my group up here. They love party games. They love these kinds of games. I stopped by the, uh, I stopped by the Arcane Wonders booth because they were demoing their new Call of Duty board game. And uh, so I sat down with my buddy Jim Pridgen and they ran us through a two player, just kind of quick, basic version of Call of Duty. And we really enjoyed ourselves. I started calling my, my buddy Jim uh, uh, an annoying seven year old, you know, because that's that's usually how that's my experience with first person shooter games online is that I just get owned by little kids who are like waiting for their mom to bring them a peanut butter sandwich and milk um, because <laughs> I'm just not that great at it. Uh, so I started ragging on Jim because he was really decimating me. Then Robert Geislinger came by and uh, he was like, did you give him the grenade? Come on, give him the grenade. And so I was able to throw a grenade and that really wasn't the turn of the tide. I was able to get some points at that point, but I still got decimated. Anyway, while I was walking away, um, Robert gave me a copy of Dubious, uh, one of their new titles that are coming from Arcane Wonders. And this is a, uh, um, well, let me just read it to you. It says, doubt is in the air. Investigating mysterious incidents has always been your passion. And when you heard about a private detective club, you immediately decided to join it. But first, you'll have to pass a special test. Seated at a table with other candidates, you must try out, you try to figure out who they are in normal life and what secrets they are hiding. So it's a storytelling game of social deduction. And that sounds really fun. Berkey played this with the Secret Cabal guys. And he said they had an absolute blast playing it. Because he played it with them the same way he used to play Sheriff of Nottingham. Now I know Sheriff of Nottingham has, has gone over like a, a lead balloon um, in some circles. I, I know I've talked to people. But... The way he plays Sheriff of Nottingham with like full on role playing is the way we've played Sheriff of Nottingham. He said that's the way they played Dubious and they had a blast playing it. So looking forward to giving this one a try. I was also able to stop by um, Thunderworks Games and uh, they gave me a copy, um, a prototype copy of uh, Stone Spine Architects, and this looked very interesting. This is a uh, campaign they're going to be running in a little bit, so I'm going to try to do a video for them. But that will probably show up around the end of the campaign, so we'll see how that goes, but I'm, I'm looking forward to giving this one a try. Uh, Kirk Dennison was able to give me a, a you know kind of like an elevator pitch about it and explain it, and it sounds interesting. So we'll see how that goes, but interested to give that one a try as well. Thunderworks also was able to give me a uh, review copy of Ten Penny Parks. Now, if you might recognize the artwork, Vincent Dutrait's artwork, but worker placement, building your own theme park, those are all things that are like, ooh, that sounds interesting. Ooh, I want to see what that's like. I was actually able to give this a try. You, can, you know that from my uh, uh, road trip video I put up yesterday and we had a blast playing it but I'll save that for the review coming up I need to get it to the table a few more times also from Thunderworks Kirk was able to uh, give me a copy of Dawn of Ulos um, and this is an interesting game where you're going to be a uh, little bit of area control mechanisms there and uh, fighting for, you know, factions fighting for control of different areas and different points and all that kind of stuff. So I'm looking forward to this. Again, he only gave me the elevator pitch. I didn't actually demo it or anything like that. But this looks interesting as well. Uh, I was speaking earlier about uh, Stanislav Kordonsky and uh, the guy who did... Um, uh, da, 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 resurgence and um, um, Rurik, Dawn of Kiev, Nova Roma. We were also able to play this. I was able to play this from the guys uh, from Elf Creek. Nova Roma is basically one of those everything and the kitchen sink as far as how to score points. But you definitely have to pick a certain strategy and be good at that strategy in order to win. 
I was pleasantly surprised that you do not have to uh, do a little bit of everything. I don't like it when games do that. And this one doesn't make you do everything. It does make you choose a strategy of two to three things, though. Uh, and if you can if you can do well and be competitive in those two to three areas, you'll have a chance at winning the game. And I like it when games do that. You pick what you want to do and do the best job you can at it. Uh, this is a prototype copy, so there may be some uh, differences in... Uh, uh, quality. Uh, he, see, he told me that the rules are done though, uh, so the pr pr component quality might be a little bit different, but I'm um, looking forward to giving this one a try. And then finally on Sunday I was able to stop by BA Games, uh, their booth, and they had a couple of games there that uh, looked super interesting. One of them was called Forges of Ravenshire, um, and that was uh, uh, an upcoming project that they were doing, but they also had this one that was called Cult of the Deep. Now, I'm not a huge Lovecraftian kind of person, and this one definitely has a Lovecraftian theme to it. But basically, uh, the way he explained it was a Lovecraftian bang the dice game. I guess he he knew me, and, and he knew that that was going to speak volumes. So he, he said basically it's kind of like bang, bang the dice game, but there's more interaction between the two player between the players, and there's no player elimination. So those two things kind of made me pique my interest. He was gracious enough to give me a copy of this. We also exchanged information so that possibly I could get in on the ground for talking about Forges of Ravenshire as well. So looking forward to that. So that's about that for my Origins recap video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that there was enough information in here for all of these games that uh, I was able to bring back. Thanks for joining me. I certainly appreciate your time, and I hope that it was informative and fun. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care.